Good day everyone and once again we are back together and um, of course I know that you are preparing for that final exam uh, in mathematics most of you are writing this coming Friday so um, I just thought that we'd just look at a few questions on functions of course I'll be also plugging you when it comes to um, you know the second paper as well so please don't mind uh, of course you can watch that whenever you want to so if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you're part of the family and uh, of course you can get in touch with us okay uh, of course uh, all our, uh, our details are on the description of this video all right now let's get into this question on functions so we're given f of x which is uh, is given by that equation a negative um, x minus 3 that's all squared plus 25 and g of x which is 2 um, which has a base of uh, half x plus 1 uh, exponent x plus 1 minus 4 all right so in this case i want you to please remember that whenever you're given a parabola uh, in that standard form or rather in in that format remember that um, so if i give you a parabola any parabola okay um, there are different ways and by the way if you haven't watched this in my channel already uh, please go and look at functions right so we've got the standard uh, form in this case x minus p squared plus q so the advantage of having this particular one is actually uh, because p and q actually represents the coordinates of the turning point notice when it comes to p in this case you've got a negative here so it means that when you take the um you know the the point or rather the turning point in this case the coordinates of the turning point it will be a positive p right it always changes sign and q retains its uh, sign okay so um as well in this case what they did is they took um the graph of g of x we see that it's an exponential graph but in this case uh we see that they have actually shifted it uh, vertically uh, by four units okay so we'll get to that in just a, a little while right now let's answer the first question right so they say to us write down the equation of the asymptote okay of g all right so remember in this case that uh, our exponential graph usually has an asymptote at x is equal to zero this is for the normal exponential graph right so what did they do we know it cuts it uh, um, you know y is equal to one so our asymptote is usually the line x is equal to or rather y is equal to zero meaning uh, the the x and the x axis right but now we've taken this graph and we've shifted it four units okay so it means now our asymptote is no longer going to be at zero but it's going to be at negative four so it means that your asymptote which is a horizontal asymptote in this case is y is equal to negative four all right and then they say to us write down the coordinates of d right so we go back you can see that d represents the turning point of this graph okay so we know in this case, it means that when we look at that standard format, it means if I look at this, right, I've got uh, 3 as well as uh, 25 as my uh, turning point. Okay, right. So it means that my turning point is going to be so the x value, in fact, uh, it's C has the point 3 and 25. Okay right and note they said write down so once they say write down it means that we uh, obviously are not uh, supposed to calculate it it's actually staring at us the answer is right in front of us okay so they say write down the range of f so note in this case that your graph starts all the way from negative infinity okay and remember that graph uh, i mean the range is where the graph exists uh, in the y uh, coordinates right so remember that the highest y value is actually right there at the turning point and in this case of course we found out that that value is 25. so it means we can say y is the element of 
Okay, negative infinity, of course, uh, negative infinity is always uh, not excluded. Right up until 25, which is included. It's part of the, the graph, right? Or uh, you can write it as y is less than or equal to 25. Okay, right. And let's go to the next question. They say write down the length of EB. Okay, so when I look at that, so E, uh, all right, let's just write that down so that you can see it there. Right, so E is that point there and B is that point. So in fact, what I need to find out is the Y value, uh, uh, sorry, my Y intercept for the parabola as well as my Y intercept for uh, the you know, for, for the exponential graph. So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do, remember at the y-intercept, this is where x is equal to zero, right? So it means I'm going to take f of zero, okay? So f of zero, which is going to be minus, now remember where there was x, now there's zero, that's minus three squared uh, plus 25, okay? All right, so this will give me negative 9. Okay, so that will be negative 9 plus 25, and that will give me 16. So it means that uh, that value at E there is 16. Now let's do the same for G, right? So we're going to take where G is 0, okay? So we're going to say, all right, so G of 0 in this case, that's going to be, um, okay, the equation for g is 2, okay, and exponent 1 over 2. Now, instead of x, I'm going to put 0 there, right? 0 plus 1, and that's minus 4, all right? So we try to solve that. Uh, 2, 1 over 2 uh, to the power 1 is a half. That's minus 4. So 2 times um, a half will be 1. So we have 1 minus 4, and that will give us negative 3. All right. So in this case, it means that the graph cuts at negative 3. That is, uh, the, that's the y-intercept for the exponential graph. So remember, we're supposed to calculate the value of EB. So it means that EB will be equal to f of 0 minus g of 0, okay? And in this case, that will be 16 minus a negative 3. And so it means that value is 19 units, okay? So that's the distance there. Right, I hope that made sense, ladies and gents. Okay, they say determine the x value for which f is decreasing, right? So when you look at uh, the graph of f, right? It increases all the way up until that turning point there. And in this case, then it starts decreasing, okay? So it means that uh, it is decreasing for all values of x from, remember our turning point in this case is at x is equal to 3, and all the way up until infinity. So in this case, it means that, okay, um, we'll say x is an element of, so that's, 6.5 so that's 6.5 so it means that x will be an element of uh, 3 now in this case i'm going to exclude 3 because remember at the turning point it is not decreasing already it's just stationary at that point uh, it is turning right it's neither increasing nor decreasing the gradient there is zero and all the way up until uh, infinity, of course, we never include infinity. Or you can simply write it as x is greater than 3. Okay, right. Okay, let's uh, finish this off. Um, okay, we've already answered 6.5. Okay, so on 6.6, .6, they say to us, calculate the average gradient between the points A and B. Right, now let's go back to our graph. Okay, so if we're going to look for the gradient at the points uh, A and B, right, we need to find out what is point A. Well, we already know the coordinates of point B, right? 
and we said this would be now this is where uh, um, x is zero right but we found out that y is actually negative three okay remember we found that when we had to calculate um you know we had to calculate uh, uh, eb right so now it means that we need the coordinates of a right and what's happening at a this is the x intercept and by the way it is the x intercept of both my parabola as well as my uh, exponential graph so you can choose whichever one that you want so what happens at the x-intercept we know this is where y is equals to zero right so it means i can take the graph of f of x and make it equal to zero right so it means i can say well this is going to be minus uh, remember that's x minus three squared plus 25 and this is equal to zero Okay, so we're going to try and solve that. So that's going to be minus uh, x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 25. When I take it to the other side, we can divide both sides by negative or you can multiply it by negative. So in this case, negative times a negative would be a positive. That's x minus 3 squared is equal to 25. Okay, so both sides are positive. Now we can take the square root of both on both sides. So x minus 3 so take the square root here, take the, uh, take the square root there. Please remember to say plus or minus on the other side. So x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 5, right? So we've got two solutions. x minus 3 is equal to positive 5 or x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. Uh, you've got x is equal to 8 here or x is equal to... Um, um, yeah x is equal to zero uh, am i correct there okay so or x is equal to zero all right um yeah it seems like i've done something that's incorrect there uh so that's oh sorry yeah i actually wrote minus three instead of minus five sorry about that so that's negative five and so that's equal to x is equal to negative two Okay, so obviously uh, the values at B, uh, in this case, not, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, the values at A are going to be negative 2 and 0. So now remember what our question was. Our question was calculate, in this case, the average gradient at AB. Now we know the coordinates of A, in this case, are negative 2 and 0. The coordinates of B are 0 and negative 3. So to calculate the gradient, we say, well, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, let's take those ones as our second values. So that's going to be negative 3 minus 0. So that's going to be a y2. That would be y1. That would be x1. And that would be x2, right? So y2 minus y1 okay divided by x2 which is 0 minus uh, x1 which is negative 2 okay so we find that gradient there that would be negative 3 uh, over 2 and it does make sense that that gradient would actually be negative if you were to try and draw it uh, it should be a negative gradient okay so that's how we get the average gradient there Right, let's go to the next question. They say graph T is obtained by reflecting G about the x-axis, right? They say write down the range of T, right? So now, if we reflect the graph about the x-axis, please, I want you to note what we're doing here, okay? So we're taking, sorry, the, the graph of G, right? So it means we're taking our... Um, exponential graph and we are reflecting it about the x-axis it means everything kind of flips over uh, so to speak okay around the x-axis right so it means uh, whatever was on the x now becomes is now on the y right okay uh, something like that okay right so it means if this value was negative three now, the other value is going to be at positive 3. Now, remember, 
In this case, we had an asymptote at y is equal to uh, um, negative 4, right? So in this case, it means our asymptote is now going to be at y is equal to 4, right? So please remember, when we are reflecting about the x-axis, uh, we just simply uh, flip the graph, okay? Uh, in this case, uh, every y value kind of changes sign. And the opposite is true as well, right? That if I'm reflecting it about the y-axis, it means I'll change the sign of x, right? So now, uh, our graph was from negative 4 all the way till infinity, but this time around, it's going to be from negative infinity, right? I hope that you saw that, right? That when I draw it, um, I drew the graph from negative infinity, and in this case, of course, it means that uh, 4 would be the highest value. So I can then answer that question. Uh, that's 6 point, um, that is 6.7, right? So 6.7 uh, simply says, okay, so y would be an element of negative infinity, okay? all the way up until uh, 4. And please remember, you don't include that because in that case, um, the graph never touches that line, right? Or you can simply say y is less than 4. That would be the range of our graph. All right, let's bring this to a conclusion. So they say to us, uh, if p of x which is equal to f of x plus 2. So what are they doing? They're taking the parabola and they are shifting it two units up. That's what they are saying. We're taking the value of the, of the graph of the parabola and we are taking it two units up. They say write down the coordinates of the turning point. So it means every y value now simply you just add 2 to it. Okay. So you remember that our, uh, our, our turning point right, was uh, at 25. Now it's actually be going to be at 25 plus 2, which is 27. So uh, in this case, it means that our turning point C is now going to be at 3 and 27. Okay, right. Okay, the last question. They say determine the values of K for which the straight line y is equal to 2x plus k will be a tangent to f, okay? Right, so we want the value where the tangent in this case uh, would be equal to, or, or rather, in this case, where we'll have a gradient of y is equal to 2x. Now, the first thing that I want you to please note there is that for the equation of the of the tangent or of the yeah the for the yeah equation of the tangent rather we've already been given the gradient of that tangent right the gradient of that tangent is 2 okay so the question is at which point right will the gradient of the tangent of the uh, parabola be equal to 2 so what i'm going to do is let's write down the equation uh, of this, uh, of f of x. So we have minus uh, x plus, uh, sorry, x minus 3, right? Let's write that properly. Uh, x minus 3 squared, right? Plus 25, okay? So let's try to write it down in a standard form so that we can actually uh, take the gradient there. So this would be minus that would be x squared minus 6x uh, plus 9. Okay, this is plus 25. Okay, so we can say this is minus x squared uh, plus 6x. So I'm multiplying the negative inside the bracket. Okay, this is going to be minus 9, okay, plus 25. So minus 9 plus 25 will give us uh, plus 16 right? So that's our equation for f of x, right? So now I want to find out at which x value is my gradient in this case going to be equal to 2, right? So I'm going to take f, uh, the derivative in this case at x is equal to 2, but let's take the derivative first. That's going to be minus 2x uh, plus 6, 
So I'm going to say the derivative, uh, where is the derivative rather uh, going to be equal to 2, which is the derivative of our straight, uh, of our tangent, right? The line that touches the graph once. So in this case, it means minus 2x is equal to, if I take the 6 to the other side, it becomes negative, right? So that's going to be minus 4. 2 minus 6 is, uh, will give us minus 4. So divide both sides by negative 2. Okay, um, so I get x is equal to 2. Now, in this case, it means this all happens at where x is equal to 2, right? But remember, uh, I believe we already, no, we didn't get the value uh, thereof on the graph. Um, what happens where x is equal to 2, okay? We don't have the corresponding y value, right? So to get that corresponding y value, uh, I am going to simply say, okay, um, let's substitute that value x is equal to 2 in the original equation, right? So f of 2, uh, which is going to be a minus 2 minus 3 squared, Okay, plus 25. Okay, so in this case, um, obviously, all, all, all that we need to do uh, is just simply add everything up, right? So, uh, so that will give us 1, negative 1, uh, in this case, uh, squared, that will give us minus 1. So we've got 24 there. Now, I'm looking for the value of k, right? So I'm going to take the equation okay, y is equal to 2x plus k, right? And in this case, what am I going to do? Just take that equation and say, well, um, where x is equal to 2, because remember, where the graph, the tangent meets the graph, okay? They have got the same x value and the same y value. So in this case, I've got uh, 24, is equal to 2 times 2 uh, plus k uh, in this case and I get my k value to be equal to 20. Okay, right. So that is essentially how the cookie crumbles. I believe there is another way uh, of doing this. I, I think I could have done it uh, using uh, the discriminant, uh, but nonetheless, it is what it is. All right, I hope that you were able to understand that question. I hope it will help you as you prepare for your exam. Otherwise, from me, your favorite uncle, I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.